Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. A lot of you might be wondering where I've been the past week. Well, there is an incident in Nevada. Many people injured. I, I can never go back. But I'm here now and ready to do the next review. 3D seems to be everywhere nowadays, doesn't it? But a lot of people forget that this used to be a very cheap gimmick before it became a very expensive gimmick. And probably its ugliest transition was in the 80s and 90s, where 3D wasn't really big money, didn't look that impressive, and to be honest, nobody really knows why it was around. And one of the movies that tried to take advantage of this relatively dead gimmick was Jaws 3, also known as Jaws 3D. If you thought Jaws 2 was unnecessary, here's a sequel that adds even more unnecessary ness. Crappy effects, boring characters, and 3D that's so lame, you'll be looking at your hand thinking that it's flat. And of course, what I mean by bad 3D is no 3D! This movie doesn't come with any glasses or anything, so it's entirely pointless. In 3D, this looks really impressive, but in real life, I look like a friggin' spaz. This is very in for, people, just an hour and a half of this, so let's take a look. I know yet! So let's see what gimmicks they try literally throwing at us in the opening. Whoa, those credits are jumping out at us! Oh wait, there's no glasses, so it just looks tacky and retarded. So we watch the point of view of probably the world's slowest moving shark as he does the unthinkable. Murders? <gasps> oh, fish! My god, not the entire fish! The incredible Mr. Lippo will never see his family again! Next. Next. NEXT! Okay, even in 3D, your fucking fish head is not scary. NEXT! So the premise of this movie is actually a little creative, at least in its setting. It takes place in SeaWorld, which I have to admit is kind of a weird advertising tie-in. Do you really want to advertise that your theme park has JAWS in it? A giant shark that can eat you anytime he wants? It's like advertising Disney World, not with more cancer. But oh well. We get a couple of guys who are trying to close this gate or something when you know who shows up. Oh! Son of a bitch! Shark crossing, you a-holes! I thought you said those tracks were secure. Something's on the gate up. Better get Mike Brody out here. Actually, all joking aside, what did Jaws exactly do? I mean, I know he's a big shark, but does he just run around with a tool belt to stop opening gates? So this one guy decides to look at the problem at dusk, because, yeah, that's when you'll have the most amount of light, right? As he senses something bad in the water. <laughs> I mean, fish! But of course, Jaws shows up and naps the guy. Wow, I can just feel the fakeness leaping off the screen. So we cut to our main characters, played by Dennis Quaid and John Putch. They play the Brody Brothers. That's right, the sons of the main character from the first Jaws movies. What relevance does this have to anything in the story? Um... Look! A 3D arm! A 3D arm! Ooh! They're accompanied by their girlfriends, played by Leah Thompson and Beth Armstrong, who like to play games like Standoff, which involves two people lightly pushing each other with their palms. Truly a battle of strength and wit. My fly's open. <laughs> oh, no, you lured me with the promise of penis. Beer. Mm, and you owe me a couple. That's right, coming up. Two bears. Um, are these two gonna stop making out? Come on, guys, you got company there. Oh. Yeah. So Punch and Thompson go down to the water to play their other favorite game. Chase the cowgirl through the knee-high tents on the beach. Um... Kinky? But meanwhile, a bigger, nastier foe is at work. That's right, I'm talking about the lowest form of scum known by man. Somewhere down there is the best coral. 
guy in Miami give us 200 bucks for the good stuff. Coral Steelers! I mean, really? Coral Steelers? We have Coral Steelers in this movie? Who's their competition? The Seahorse Mafia? So, of course, Jaws strikes again, but it wants to be sure it leaves no evidence behind. Bet you didn't know Jaws can suck rats through a straw, did you? So the wife of the first dead guy is concerned because they can't find his body. So they take that boat that you always see the planeteers use to go under the water and see if they can find it. We all live in a yellow submarine, yellow submarine. Now, get ready, folks, for some of the best underwater effects you have ever seen in your entire life. Wow. Happy Meal toys in a bathtub have nothing compared to the scene. In fact, the ship itself sort of looks like Ronald McDonald's electric shaver, doesn't it? We're at 25 feet headed for the Spanish Galleon. And hey, if you thought my green screen effects were impressive, get a load of this. Yeah, I bet you didn't know the ship had a cloaking device, did you? Hoverman broke divers' rules last night. Out there. If anything happened to him, the ocean current would have washed him up here. That's a lot of fish. So they come across a fake sunken ship, because if it's good enough for your fish tank, it's good enough for SeaWorld, as something has the dolphin spooked. But what could it be? I don't know, they've been acting strange for the last two days. Look at them. There's a shark, bitch! Run! So as they get out to look around, they come across the ferocious animal. Or at least the hand puppet version of it. <laughs> oh my god, it's Whack-A-Shark! So Quaid and Armstrong get away by, listen to this, riding the dolphins to safety. Flipper, flipper, faster than they replay the footage about 30 times to simulate a chase sequence as they finally escape. So this British fish hunter or something comes aboard to try and capture the shark and make tons of money off of it. Actually, that guy is from Manimal. Cinema Snob, what are you doing here? And what's Manimal? <laughs> Only the greatest series to come out of the 1980s? Let me fill you in. It all started on September 30th, 1983. Simon McCorkendale starred as Dr. Jonathan Chase, a man with the brightest of futures, darkest of past. So anyway, if we kill this beastie on camera, I can guarantee you media coverage. There isn't a great white alive in captivity anywhere. If any facility can maintain a white, it's us. If, if we could- Whoa, what is up with Quaid's pits? I guess shark attacks give him an unbelievable fear of Old Spice. That would really be a spectacular event, no doubt about that, huh? So the owner of SeaWorld gives his blessing as the team heads down to catch Jaws. By the way, when did SeaWorld become the Starship Enterprise? You seen anything yet? Yeah, we'll get him on the monitor. All I can say is, I'm worried. We're in a lousy horror movie and I'm the only black person around. Clearly, I need to hire more black people. Manimal had the ability to turn into any animal that he damn well pleases. So they set out to hunt the beast and, oddly enough, they catch it. Jaws is captured and brought to one of the fish tanks. Gee, they're not trying to fake us out like they did in the first movie by any chance, are they? Oh, wait for it. So they open up their new underwater attraction, which I guess is supposed to be like a haunted house underwater. <laughs> Oh, come on, that's not a ride, that's a hentai. There's no extra charge for this unique attraction. Our underwater tunnels are not only fun, but informative. You know what's funny how often I have to remind myself that this was shot in 3D? Because shots like that, they blend in so well to the story. Oh wait, no, they're awkward and stupid. So through some really confusing dialogue, I guess the shark dies because they put him in the wrong tank. Unfortunately, that doesn't distract the people from the dead guy who's floating in the water. <laughs> who's the a-hole who pushed the girl into the dead body? I mean, who does that? Oh, hey, a dead guy! Scooch in closer, Susie! We gotta get a picture of this! Oh, grow up. So they discover that it wasn't Jaws that they originally captured, but her son. That's right, Jaws is a woman. And hell hath no fury like a PMSing shark who wants revenge for her dead fishy. 
Now, in the series 90-minute pilot, Manimal teams up with hot young detective Brooke McKenzie. <laughs> Jesus, try speaking English to them. Maybe then they'll listen. Sheesh, is it me or is Jaws making like incredible speed? Does she just have a motor attached to her fin? <laughs> so after not eating anyone, yeah, she just sort of looks at him. She decides that bumper boats are more to her liking, as she <gasps> nips one of her victims. That's right, she nips now. Jaws isn't as much a savage killer as much as she is a light nibbler. But she makes up for it by trying to destroy the underwater haunted house. <laughs> I can see why SeaWorld wanted to do a tie-in with this movie. Can't you just see the promotional video right now? Looking for a summer vacation? Want to bring the kids? Hoping to be trapped in a watery grave with little to no hope of escape? Come to SeaWorld, the disappointing alternative to Disney. So the people are trapped literally under the sea as that British guy tries to go and lure the shark into a giant underwater cage. But he gets caught and is unable to escape. What? Is he trying to cast a spell on her? Expecto Patro- Wait! You can't eat me! I'm British food! I taste terrible! So the British guy literally gets stuck in Jaws' teeth as her other row of teeth, which I guess are in her throat or something, finishes him off. His assistant doesn't take the news well. Come on! Come on! Come on, you bloody why is it when people yell in this movie, you can never understand what the hell they're saying? Fill up, hold up, man! Hold up, man, fill up! No, that was real gripping. And that he was really gripping that ladder. You can't deny he was really holding onto that ladder. Catherine, what are you doing? I'm going down there. Are you crazy? He needs eyes in the back of his head, Calvin. Oh look, another black guy! I guess that gives Calvin a fighting chance to survive this movie, doesn't it? We got to see Manimal turn into a cat so he could peek down Ursula Anders's dress. So, even though she's in a giant metal cage, does that stop Jaws? Fuck no. She ripped through it like it was wet toilet paper. Good lord, nothing can stop this killing machine! Well, except maybe one thing. Chuck Norris! I'm Chuck Norris! But even then, he'd have to be riding a shark just as big as Jaws. A ass, riding a shark just as big as Jaws! So they finally get the people out, as I'm sure they reenact the audience's reaction of leaving this movie. Unfortunately, Jaws starts floating towards the base. Oh, and I don't mean swim, I mean float. Having actual movement would require another double-A battery. The effects for this movie never cease to amaze me. I especially love how Jaws just freezes in time as a vacuum of water floods into the building. It's like she's so bad that she ascends above water. Even the elements of Earth can't possibly stop her. Let's not forget about the time he turned into a horse to stop a robber. So after she breaks the fourth wall, she goes looking around for tasty morsels. Guess who she picks? Phew! Thank God I have that other black guy! I guess lousy killer monsters really do prefer dark meat. Later! So Quaid and Armstrong try to swim out as Jaws gets stuck between one of the walls. Oh hey, come on, now you're just teasing me! Come on down here and fight like a shark! So I guess the British guy and the grenade are still in her mouth, and yet somehow she doesn't choke to death, as Quaid uses it to blow up the shark for good. 
Do we enter an itchy and scratchy cartoon? Way to end on a high note! Yes, what about the dolphins? Those characters that play little to no part, but now we're suddenly concerned about. Yes, the dolphins make it out as well. Which is funny, because we don't really know if any of the people made it out alive, or if they just drowned to death. But the dolphins are okay, and that's all that matters. Well, okay, no it isn't, but who cares? The movie's over. I'll take anything you throw at me. And that's Jaws 3D, or as I like to call it, shit. Not only are the special effects terrible, even if you had the 3D glasses, but the story is just ludicrous and the characters are so boring that there's literally nothing that can save it. Even if it was in 3D. And that's all I gotta say about... You know, I wonder. The series was cancelled on December 17th, 1983 due to poor ratings, with it being put on a nice cinema stop. Of Dallas I'm the nostalgia critic guy from Memory Zone. Now, Simon McCorkendale's appearance in Jaws 3D marks only the second time that McCorkendale has been featured in something that has featured sharks and the Jaws theme. Now, am I saying that there's a scene from Manimal where he turns into a shark to go after a bad guy and it plays the Jaws theme? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Mike! The dolphin!